for uscfootball.com, I'm Jack Smith, joined by Chris Trevino for instant analysis from USC's Wednesday evening practice. Chris, people were disappointed. We waited till the end to give a weather review yesterday. Today, it's pretty cold. It's chilly for sure, but that doesn't happen until the later parts of practice. It's pretty nice actually, but I will say there wasn't a ton of notes from the first part of practice because it was very, very quick for us media. They only let us in for seven minutes, Jack. It was seven minutes on the dot. They only let us watch the opening stretching portion and they kicked us out. So most of our stuff comes from post-practice post interviews. Well, Wednesday post-practice ones are always, you know, one of the bigger ones because we got to talk to Caleb Williams and Alice Grinch. Let's start with the USC defensive coordinator. He mentioned something that we've been talking about for a very long time, USC's work on tackling. What did you gather from his notes on the topic? Tackling is going to be the big thing USC fans, everyone's going to be watching when the Trojans take the field uh, in Tucson against the Wildcats, against a very good offense. You know, if, if USC comes out and plays like they did against Utah, this might be in for a shootout. That's something we mentioned yesterday. So tackling has been, been the big emphasis, not necessarily tackling purely, but a lot of tackling drills, a lot of that. And, you know, Grinch talked about how it's not necessarily that they haven't been making the tackle attempts, it's that they're just not executing on the actual tackle. You know, you're out there, you're hitting people, you gotta, his quote, you gotta come up with the body part. You gotta grab onto something, you gotta bring them down. You have to finish the attempt. He sees the attempts being made by USC's defense, they just need to finish better. Yeah, and they had been okay through tackling for the first couple of games. The Utah one is really where you started to see some of the preseason concerns come to fruition a little bit. He also mentioned, we mentioned the Arizona offense, that they do have some very great skill position players, as we talked about on yesterday's instant analysis. What did he have to say about some of those guys? Notably, this will be another quarterback that they, they can face that can make things out of nothing you know they can that can when things go bad they can extend the play so that'll be another you know issue for them to kind of corral and fix and you know Jaden Delora a very good quarterback can turn the ball over at some time so I know USC's defense wants to be opportunistic and get some of those balls but they do have a very talented wide receiver core you know Jacob Cowing you know Tatori McMillan T-Mac as most people know him and then Dorian Singer you know three very great seasons going on for those guys and you know lucky for USC's defense they practice against a really good wide receiver core every day in practice but this will be the toughest wide receiver unit they have faced all season and Grinch kind of talked about how they all have their kind of different calling court and they calling card excuse me and they can beat you in a multitude of ways they can run right by you they have the height they got possession guys and guys you can get yards after catch so a lot of ways they can beat you with this receiving core so but he also stressed that it's not necessarily you know the secondary versus the wide receiver unit or you know just an example Makai Blackman versus Jacob Cowing or anything like that it's not one guy in man coverage or a bunch of guys in man coverage or whatever it's one of 11. Everyone has to do their job. It takes 11 guys to get the pass rush going. It takes 11 guys to get the coverage tight. So it's not a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's not a secondary versus wide receiver. It's, it's everybody. So he, he kind of stressed that everyone has to do their job and they'll be okay. I think Makai Blackman would welcome a one-on-one -on -one against Absolutely. Jacob Cowing any day of the week after his comments yesterday saying, you know, 50 balls in the air means 50 chances for the USC defense to make a play. One spot that USC will be looking to to make a play is going to be the linebacker position. Lincoln Riley mentioned yesterday he's not concerned with the Trojans' depth, but Alex Grinch had a different opinion today. You said that he said that he was concerned about the linebacker depth. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, more or less Grinch, you know, he's a little bit closer to the defense. He sees it every day and he kind of said, you know, he is a little bit concerned about that linebacker depth and as they should be, you know, some of their guys are banged up right now. We, we all saw Eric Gentry get carted off against the Utah game. He's been the, the heart and soul of that middle of that defense. So an emotional leader and a playmaker on the field. So naturally, it, it's it's a concern for Lincoln, uh, excuse me, Alex Grinch and his defense having one of those guys, you know, banged up and a lot of other guys banged up. Shane Lee playing in a cast and he says, that, that only means that guys in that position group have to step up and the guys around the position group also have to step up. So that's going to be something they're going to have to play through this weekend and, you know, moving forward as they try to get healthier. He said in this game in football, no one is ever 100 percent. No one is ever 100 percent. The goal is to just be a little bit healthier than you were the week before. You know, this is a physical sport, a rough sport, so no one is ever fully healthy. So they're just trying to get to that point where they can get guys back, get guys closer to being 100 percent. And, you know, he was asked about guys playing in clubs. You know, Shane Lee has, has been wearing a club the last couple of weeks and he says that's no excuse. You know, you have to go out and make that tackle. You signed up to play football. You signed up to play defense. You know, you tackle on the defense. So if you if you go out there, you have to make the tackle club or no club there's no excuses well especially because to a cv no more as we mentioned yesterday made a couple tackles with a compound broken finger out Grinch talked about that a little bit today what did you gather from what he said about just a freak injury that to a cv no more turned into a, a rally cry for the usc defense 
I actually, side story, broke my finger playing football. It was flag football. It was not compound. It was close to being compound. Which That's is, not as cool. That, not as cool, and I did not make a tackle or two tackles or stay, and I immediately went to the hospital. But to a CV, much tougher than I am. And, of course, Alex Grinch was asked about that story because it's a great story, albeit a hey, kind of a gross one if you see that up close. But he used the words, maybe he purposely phrased it this way, but he said it's, it was a great visual. Now, I don't think he was specifically talking about a finger coming out of his linebacker's uh, hand, I think he was more talking about the teaching lesson in that, and that, you know, that toughness, that, that ability to just go out there and play through everything and anything. And he did kind of make it a, make it a good lear learning point for, for the defense in that, you know, Tua CV is who he is. Tua CV is always like that. And he mentioned, there's only one of you and it's not like there's an elite version of you. There's like a fourth quarter version of you. There's a first half of you. There's a tired version of you there's an energetic version of you you have to be the same person every time and that's kind of the teaching point is you know be consistent be that number one person all the time and play to that level every snap every rep every game well, I think if fans are familiar with the show, they know that we talked about something very similar just a couple weeks ago when Alex Krenz said, if you know, if you can make a play, a big stop on the goal line, what's stopping you from making that stop right when the team gets the ball and not letting them get to the goal line in the first place, which the USC defense still working on, but they've been able to make a couple stops. Uh, you mentioned to us Stephen Omura and, and Alex Krenz saying it's a great visual. Rajon Davis said after the, that game that to us Stephen Omura sent him a picture of the hand and he's just like, oh, it was gross. He, did, he, he really laughed about just how gross that injury was. Uh, and then speaking of Rajon Davis, we mentioned him yesterday, Lincoln Riley, saying he's on the cusp of getting some actual playing time for the Trojans, possibly uh, some important reps. We got to talk to him today for the first time in a long time. Uh, he said that his individual goal that the coaching staff laid out for him over the bye week was practice like a starter. So he wasn't able to, to tell us exactly you know, how much playing time he thinks he's going to get. He was just told, go into the week of practice and practice like you're a starter. They want to see him take the reps uh, seriously, think that he's going to be a starter, and we'll see what happens on Saturday. But it's sounding like Rajon Davis might get some meaningful snaps for the Trojans. Right, I know a lot of USC fans going back to last season when USC's defense was terrible, like throw the freshman and see what he's got. A former, you know, top 50 recruit, and a 4-4 speed can cover tight ends like a cornerback as a linebacker. He has a very unique skill set and a skill set that a lot of teams would like to have. So that's why USC fans want to see him on the field. And, you know, this might be the week we see it. We just mentioned that uh, Link, uh, Alex Grinch concerned about the linebacker depth. They might do some more rotation. You know, to a CV number 44 might get some more playing time as well as they try to battle through some injuries and some some depth issues. So look out for number nine, number 44. Those might be guys who have their name called this weekend. And Rajon, everyone's really excited, and I'm sure when he takes the field for extended reps, if he does, you know, I think a lot of USC fans are going to be happy to see kind of what the future looks like. Yeah. Final point from today's practice, we got to talk to Caleb Williams after. The last time we had seen Caleb was when he was very emotional after the Utah loss. He mentioned how much he hates losing, as he had ever since he got to USC. So this is the first time we've seen him after the loss. What did you gather from his post-practice post press conference? He was asked specifically, did that emotion that he kind of had after the game kind of surprise him? And he said no. And he, as you mentioned, hates losing. He mentioned that several times in his post-game presser, or excuse me, post-practice presser, that he hates to lose. You know, it's one of those things where you hate losing more than you love winning. That's the kind of guy Caleb Williams is. And, you know, if you didn't see it, you know, Caleb Williams was really emotional, crying on the field after the game. And, you know, he said, you know, point blank, I love this team. And I look back on things that I could have done better to kind of get that win. And it was obviously a very close loss, one point loss to Utah on the row and a chance where they did sort of have an opportunity at the end. And you kind of left feeling like, hey, what could I have done more? And, you know, that love for that team, you know, kind of drives that emotion for him and wanting to get the wins for those guys in those locker rooms. But he also said, you know, you know, they've kind of sat on it. They're ready to go out there and play. And, you know, based on what the, what they've gone through the last two weeks, he feels confident that not, not just that they're going to go out there and play well, but the confidence as a whole hasn't been shaken. You know, we talked about after that that locker room, how he, he they still had that swagger. You know, you went into Utah, you lost by one point in a game that was essentially a coin flip. You know, there were some calls that went either way, plays that were made either way, and you know, USC certainly could have left that that stadium with a win. So they still had some confidence after that, after going through all that all that adversity out there. They still felt good, and I think they're going to channel that going to Tucson this week. I really noticed his confidence when he was talking about the rest of the season. He says, you guys just, you know, watch. We've got this run we're going to go on. Not mentioning, as some other players would, we've got an ability to go on a run, maybe run the table, make the Pac-12 championship. He's like, you guys, just, just watch the run we're going to go on. It's going to be awesome. And the last thing that he mentioned was a quote from a coach he didn't mention by name, but saying before the game, you know what? No good, no good book or no good story 
does not have adversity. So the team is clearly prepared to have adversity, and I think they're prepared to work through it through the bye week. Did you have any thoughts about that statement? He said that was something a coach said, like you said, before the game in the locker room, and it's something one of the first things he repeated once he got back in the locker room after the Utah loss, just to remind them, hey, good stories, they need adversity, and they're going through it right now, or they did, uh, you know, in Utah. And Jack, you wouldn't watch a movie or read a book that didn't have just good all the way through. That's boring. No one wants to see that. You need some conflict. You need something to go wrong so you can overcome it. So that's where USC is in this point of the season, in this point of their 2022 story. And we'll see what happens moving forward. But he ended on a really great quote, and that was, you know, we got punched in the face. We're going to get up and go punch somebody else in the face. And, you know, I'm just thinking... If you're an Arizona fan listening to that, you're like, oh, gosh, what's going to happen on Saturday? They're going to come out swinging, it sounds like. It kind of feels like a Halloween theme. We've got a compound broken finger. We've got punching someone in the face. A lot of violence and, and gruesome injuries going on on today's instant analysis. I'm not going to let you get out of here without giving a prediction for the Arizona game, as you won't be on the Tunnel Vision show tomorrow. So what's your overall thought? I don't remember what the spread is, but what do you think happens in the game? I believe initially it was two touchdowns, so about 14 points. I would not be surprised if that's moved up a little bit, but whatever the case... I'm going USC, you know, I'm going by more than two touchdowns. You know, I would venture to say, you know, Arizona's given up 49 points in all of their, you know, big Pac-12 losses. Oregon, uh, Cal put up 49 points. Cal, who has notoriously struggled to put the ball in the end zone, scored 49 points on Arizona. So, you know, I'm thinking I'm maybe a little bit too uh, optimistic about this offensive performance, but I'm thinking like 55 to like 28. 31 something like that i you know i think they're gonna put up points i think arizona will put up some points but it's not gonna be enough i don't think it'll be enough to to keep up with that lincoln riley and caleb williams machine coming to tucson yeah well notably there's been a ton of energy at practice this week whether it's caleb williams talking about all the confidence whether it's uh tuli tuli Pelotu mentioning yesterday that one, their practice yesterday morning was one of the more energetic ones that they've seen so hey usc fans should be excited about the game against uh the wildcats and expect a lot of offense either way uh for chris Trevino, i'm jack smith this has been instant analysis check out uscfootball.com for more